Hello, hello, my dear friends. Uh, this is Dr. Uh, Jayavardhan Malkande, Assistant Professor, in Zoology, Digambara Bindu Arts, Commerce and Science College, Bhakaradist, Nande, Maharashtra. Friends, today I am here to uh, start the paper entitled PC Culture for BSc third year semester fifth and that paper number is paper number 13A that is the uh, specialization paper in BSc TY of Swami Ramananda Tirth Mahatma University Nande. Okay friends uh, in my last lecture I uh, elaborate all the uh, points of uh, syllabus of this paper okay it includes near about four unit and among the four units today we will see the first unit and the first part of the first unit is the fish farm engineering okay so we will start the uh, actual syllabus of this paper dear friends we know the our paper title is pisciculture so we should know what is pisciculture so see here the uh, pisciculture it is the breeding rearing and transplantation of fish by artificial means is called pisciculture okay means the breeding the rearing and the transplantation of fish by the artificial method is called pisciculture okay and it is also called as fish farming we have nothing but and fish farming okay then it is the principal form of aquaculture okay it involves raising fish commercially in tanks small ponds or enclosures and that is for it is usually for the food purpose okay that's why they are called pisciculture now uh, as far as the pisciculture is concerned or the fish farming is concerned uh, in our india in our country three major crops that is indian major crops they are cultured throughout our country okay among these three major crops uh, number one is the katla katla levi rohita and the sirinas brigala these three crops it is they are cultured throughout the india okay and uh, according to their ecological niches and their feeding habitats or their feeding habits they uh, live in a single pond okay together all together they live and there is no competition between them okay means among the three species means katla katla devi rohita and sirinas mrigala from uh, in that three species there is no competition for food purpose because see here the katla katla it is the surface feeder fish okay whatever the zooplankton is present in the surface layer it consumes okay and the levirohita it is the column feeder and it feeds mainly on the phytoplankton okay and the third fish of this indian major carp is the sirinus mrigala okay sirinus mrigala so this is the three species katla katla levirohita and the sirinus mrigala so sirinus mrigala is bottom feeder and feeds on both of the uh, content that is the phytoplankton or zooplankton okay along with this three indian major carps okay another three uh, species can be cultured along with these three uh, indian major carps okay so that particular three species they are called exotic carps okay they are uh, exotic carps so see here the hypothalamic monotrix it is also called as silver carp okay and the uh, tinofidon idila it is also called as grass carp and the last fish in the exotic carp is the cyprinus carpio it is also called as common carp it, this these three species can be cultured along with the uh, three indian major carps okay now Now we move towards the fish farm engineering. Uh, 
my dear friends see here the success of any aquaculture system relies on its design and construction okay and the major designing features can be deliberated on the basis of the four points that is the number one topography number two soil type number three water supply and number four lay out of fish farm this is the uh, first part of the first unit of this paper okay that is the fish farm engineering it includes uh, four sub points it that is topography soil type water supply and the lay out of fish farm now we move towards the number uh, first part is the topography friends one of the most important aspects of the planning of aqua farms is the selection of site it is very important where we construct the fish farm so the site selection is very important as far as the fish farm is concerned okay and the proper site selection is the key to successful aqua farming okay prior to designing and construction the site should be thoroughly surveyed to determine the topography and the land configuration okay then the again the question arises here that what is topography so friends topography is a word used to describe the shape of the land that is whether it is flat or hilly upland or lowland etc okay and the topography affects the cost of construction and draining of water oh that's why they are very important this topography is important in the fish farm construction okay then the most useful topography for a fish pond is that which allows water to fill the ponds and drain them by gravitational pull or gravitational force okay that is the most useful type of graph topography of the fish pond then the ponds built on a slope can be drained easily and such an area can be easily converted into a large pond by constructing an embankment on one side to the or uh, one side to close the outlet okay now the next point in this uh, fish farm engineering is a soil type friends the basic criteria for site selection is that the soil should not be porous okay means the soil whatever the soil we or whatever the place we choose for the fish farm um, uh, construction of fish farm at that time when you do not choose the soil which is which is porous okay so the soil must have the quality of retaining water for a long time because we will we have uh, construct the fish farm and fish farm contains uh, water and the particular the particular ponds they require uh, water for a long time that's why the soil must have the quality to retaining the water for a long time okay and the soil with silt and clay is more suitable for construction of fish farm okay another important aspect or another important factor in the soil is the it uh, soil with this silt and the clay is more suitable for the construction of fish farm okay then again the soil has a great power of uh, water retention and also contributes to the fertility of the water due to its nutrients okay friends and the most important aspect in this is the natural food if the soil is good soil quality is very nice okay at that time same time the natural food that is the phytoplankton zooplankton they they are increases if the soil is good quality okay now again the gravelly and sandy soils have poor water retaining capacity we know the sandy soil or the gravelly they have they do not have the uh, capacity to hold the water okay and it the high rates of the seepage okay they have the high rates of seepage hence this type of soil is not suitable for fish ponds okay so sandy soil or gravelly soil is not suitable for the fish pond then the fertility of the soil is depend 
largely on the pH. Okay, again, pH is a very important factor. It is a hydrogen ion concentration of the water. Okay, so that is very important for the fertility. As far as the fertility of the pond is concerned, okay. Therefore, the pH of soil should be in between seven to nine. Okay, means from neutral to the some uh, alkaline nature soil is required or it is good for the uh, fish pond. Okay, and again, if the land has been used for agriculture purpose, okay, previously, so soil should be tested for a residual. pesticides okay because when we use the particular soil for agriculture at that time we uh, may use the uh, pesticides herbicides weedicide whatever the chemicals okay so uh, all these pesticides weedicides they are uh, remain in this soil for that purpose we have to test this soil okay and no doubt these pesticides or the weedicides they are toxic to the fishes okay now the soil should be tested by soil analysis to determine whether or not the soil is capable of holding water okay so for that purpose uh, in every district we have krushi vidyan kendra okay and uh, in our maharashtra we have four uh, agricultural universities okay from there you just uh, give their sample soil sample okay and they give the Uh, results of your soil sample okay by test uh, by analysis them okay by analyzing them then the nursery and rearing ponds can be constructed on porous soil earlier just i have said the porous soil is not for good for the uh, construction of fish pond but if the, if do not if we do not have any choice okay if we have the uh, such type of soil for the Uh, for this, this type, uh, for the construction of fish pond, then the nursery or the rearing ponds it can be constructed on porous soil because they are seasonal. Means the nursery and the rearing ponds they are seasonal and they are requ they required to hold water for a short or they are required to hold water for a short period. Means the nursery or the uh, rearing ponds they are required to hold water for a short period. Okay, and if you want to use porous soil for stocking ponds again, okay. so then the porous soil should be treated with clay or suitable soil sealant is spread over the bottom in several layers to make it uh, impervious okay this is the uh, soil type okay now the third point in this fish farm engineering is the most important point okay that is the water supply uh, friends see here the availability of adequate supply of water is the most important consideration when we construct any fish pond okay then what are the resources for the particular uh, fish ponds so see here rivers lakes or big reservoirs are considered to be the best source of water again along with this uh, rivers lakes or reservoirs the streams canals and wells are also good and dependable source of water for the ponds and the site should have good quality water for culture and should be free from pollution okay when we select a place okay just to check the uh, as we uh, check soil for the uh, pesticide analysis okay pesticide residue okay so same here water should be tested before the uh, actual process is start means it is uh, be or it the water should be free from pollution okay now see here the arrangement should be made for proper drainage when we construct any fish pond the the drainage it it should be a proper way okay so pond should be constructed that each can be drained completely and individually okay each and every pond means nursery pond rearing pond stocking ponds they they are drained completely and the individually okay then water can be replaced with fresh oxygenated water uh, in uh, fish farming uh, it is required because uh, number of problem arises when we culture fishes okay and at that time the decrease uh, the oxygen depletion is the main uh, it, the main problem call, uh, occurs okay at that time the when we replace the water uh, with the fresh oxygenated water okay then the drain pipe of the pond 
should be large enough to quick drainage okay and inlet pipe should be uh, 15 to 20 cm above the water level and must be provided with a screen to prevent the entry of wild fish in a into pond no doubt uh, this is very important uh, criteria when the when we uh, fix the inlet pipe because whatever the fish is present in the river water or whatever the fish is present in the reservoir that wild fish is may enter into the uh, into our pond and it is very uh, it affects the other uh, other fishes present in the pond okay same uh, criteria we have to uh, follow for the outlet also means the screen should be placed at the end of the outlet also to check the loss of fish from the pond whatever fishes we have culture in a pond that along with the particular water when we drain the water from the pond at that time uh, whatever the fishes we have culture that fishes is not except from the pond that's why we require a screen okay to the uh, at the end of the outlet also okay now the pond should be free from overflow or flooding from the rainwater this is one of the important uh, point in the water supply and now the next point in this regard is the layout of fish farm okay uh, so uh, layout of a fish farm so see here the layout of a fish farm depends upon the total area available whatever we have how much area is there okay it is one aspect then the species to be culture which type of species we have to uh, we are going to culture and the type of farming to be practiced okay means uh, in which type of farming we will practiced this is these three points important as far as the when we think about a layout of any fish farm okay for restricted for the farming fry and uh, fingerlings are procured from the market okay and um, are grown in ponds to marketable size and for this purpose a few rearing and stocking ponds are required to be constructed but when we think about a complete fish farming okay so in complete fish farming a large number of tanks are required for a specific purpose what are the purposes see here spawning then egg laying then the fry to fingerlings means the brood fishes or the brood fish are spawned okay it require hatchery hatchery then the egg collecting hapa is there okay that egg collecting hapa after uh, uh, after hatching the eggs the uh, hatchling is there okay and the, from the hatchlings the fry okay so the brood fish are spawned eggs are hatched fry are reared to the fingerlings and the adults so that purpose you require different ponds for example uh, for fry you require nursery pond for a uh, fingerling stage you require rearing ponds and after the fingerlings uh, it attain some um, Say more than some after uh, the fingerlings they are stocked in the um, rearing ponds okay and after some days that particular fishes they are transferred to the stocking ponds okay then the hence ponds can be arranged in one of the following way so this is the one um, example of the uh, layout of a fish farm you can see here the uh, fish farm this is a structure of fish farm okay it contains the nursery ponds here nursery pond is there uh, rearing pond is there okay and the stocking pond is there okay this uh, layout is contained near about four different nursery pond okay with having different sizes and the uh, four uh, rearing ponds again okay, their size is different and the four stocking or sorry the five stocking pond is uh, will uh, present in this fish farm okay this is the inlet pipe okay and the water comes from the particular inlet pipe to the all uh, ponds okay so see here the ponds are constructed in a series one behind other and are connected to each other okay water from the source is supplied to the ponds by a channel and last pond has an outlet to drain excess of water and ponds are connected to each other and one overflow into the other so this is the example i have just mentioned here see here the water source okay with this help of this uh, uh, inlet 
so water is coming from the water source what uh, means it is uh, or whether it is the river or pond or uh, reservoir whatever may be okay then the uh, different pond pond is there okay they are interlinked with each other okay so here ponds linked with each other and the only one uh, outlet is there okay so this type of ponds can be constructed and uh, another type of pond means this here the ponds are arranged parallel to each other and have separate inlet and outlet so that water from one pond doesn't uh, does not overflow into the other and they may be built in one or two rows a screen is always provided near the inlet and outlet to prevent entry of wild fishes uh, wild fish and uh, loss of cultured fishes from the pond see here earlier uh, in figure uh, just see here the ponds okay and they have separate inlet okay they have separate outlet also okay so with this the uh, overlap overflow of the pond is not uh, happen and this is the outlet of when we uh, see here this is the screen where the when the water is uh, going to the fish pond okay and lastly uh, at the end or the um, uh, when outlet pipe uh, require also screen for the uh, escape of the cultured fishes okay so uh, see here friends uh, this is the four points in the fish farm engineering okay number 1 the topography number 2 soil type number 3 water supply and number 4 is the layout of fish farm so friends uh, if you have any problem regarding this okay you just ask your questions in our google classroom okay till then uh, stay home stay safe thank you very much thank you